Yeah, it was always going to be, I think, with with the heat and um, the fixture list that we've had. Um, you know, so what, I think it was the fifth game in 13, 14 days. Um, I, I've tried to keep it fresh, as fresh as I can over the over the time. Um, But it was always going to be one of those ones where they're going to. We, we didn't get the second goal, which was key. If we got that second goal, that would have been that would have been key. But because we didn't, they're always in the game, obviously. And they're a, they're such a dangerous threat on set pieces. They've some very competitive guys in the air, and they're very good at winning second balls as well, and just continuing the pressure. And we gave away like tired fouls, you know, and just tired possession. But in saying that, you know, I can't. You know, fault them for it because it's it has been a tough, tough, you know, little little bit we've had. And um, and um, but what I what I can say is is you, you've got to stand up and you've got to against that San Jose team because they'll win a lot of games. You know, playing like that, they're really well organised. They they know what they're doing on the set pieces and the long throws are dangerous. They're such a dangerous. They win a lot of games through that. Um, it's a very tough, tough game, and so you've got to stand up and you've got to be men and you've got to deal with it. And um, To get a clean sheet and uh, a win is um, is what 100% what we're looking for. Um, he was injured on Wednesday. Um, he trained on Friday lightly and he tried to get through it in that warm up. And he just couldn't. He pulled out. Yeah. What was the decision for Morrow? Was it just to play Wednesday? Just, no, just knew that I had a um, bereavement in the family and he he flew straight on Thursday straight back to Toronto. Then a flight to the funeral and then he came back late last night um, so it's obviously not ideal preparation for him um, and that's why we had to do that change mm. yeah yeah yep. he's um, you know he's he, he, he you know I think he's his icing is growing at the moment from that volley he did in the first half but he's just he's just a kid that he's just a lovely guy that just you know is not afraid of any occasion he He kind of puffs his chest out and just goes for it. And whether you put him at striker or you put him in goal, he's he's just that type of personality. And those type of personalities go a long way, and and not just in in soccer, um, but in life. And um, that's why he's just a pleasure to have around the place. Warner was uh, welcome back to the midfield, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. I think you saw Collins why we why we brought the man in. Um, you know, he was very good again. Um, And he'll only get better and better once he understands the system where we play. I mean, you know, we, we, we still haven't really had time to embed Luke in, embed Dominic in, obviously, um, and Colin in with the system. But now we've got, you know, we've got this three-week break. Um, we can really work them, and we can re really work on the combinations and get everything going. And hopefully, we can come out of the back of that with my well. I'm not going to. Ho hopefully, US do very well, but we'll probably have Michael back pretty soon. You know, hopefully, and then we can start really. I feel like a kind of a team, like, you know, a complete team, yeah. When you think of a draft pick playing better than Highland right now, is there one in the league? Well, I can remember about five weeks ago when some young kid put one in the top corner from about 30 out, which annoyed the hell out of me, tell you the truth. But he's the only one that um, I could think of at the moment. But um, in terms of, you know, a young man playing at the back, I think it's tough, you know, because obviously you're under the microscope there. And he, you know, it, Toronto, you are. You're on even more under the microscope, and, but he's um, he's taken a, taken a responsibility on really well. And but he's got guys like Stephen around him and Bradley Orr and you know Joe Bennick that talk him through it and help him. And you know they're all good. They're all great guys. They all look after each other and hope for the best for each other. He seems kind of fearless. I mean, to, to, to his credit, he did he did earn a penalty. He, he almost doubles really in the second half. Has two audacious strikes that no one else. Yeah, um, that's why we, we we paid a bit of extra allocation money to actually go up the draft to get him, because we saw something that um, just that just that fearlessness. And in my opinion, you know, gets you a long way in life, I think. And um, we saw that in him when we interviewed him. We saw him when he played. And, and um, look, he's going to have he's going to have times where it's going to be tough as well. He's riding a nice high, but um, he's um, progressing exactly how we dreamed he would be to tell you the truth and um, he'll only get better and um, and um, we're just really help happy that um, the young man's playing for us. I know it's going to be a penalty spot but the man's goal uh, was his fourth game winner of the season uh, and he's, he's one shot of the franchise record. I mean, do you ever allow yourself to think where you'd be without him right now? 
Well, no, because that's why we put them in, you know. It's <laughs> the reason why we signed them out. Um, we know now, we know now, look, last year we had a shape that always made us competitive in games, and we got the opportunity we, we wouldn't score it. We knew if we keep our, our shape and organisation as, as strong and all that, we will get opportunities, and, and generally that's why I went for Jermaine Defoe, because he generally takes them. Now, 100%, you know, we have to evolve as a team. Our passing's got a lot better. Well, I mean, there's a whole list of things. We've got to get better as a team, and I'm the first one to sit here and say that. We know. But we have to build a foundation. We have to learn how to win. We have to learn how to win 1-0. We have to learn how to win ugly. We have to learn how to win without the ball. We have to learn how to win with it. And, and, and it's just growing, you know, pains of... Um, off a young team, and um, or a team that hasn't been together very often, and um, and so we'll work hard. We we know we're not nowhere near we're at our best, and we'll, we'll continue to work hard in the training ground. One of the kind of storylines of that game, at least from San Jose, is that uh, like the play of Stephen Lenhart and how he, he can agitate players. We saw it against Henry, we saw it and try and do it against Ben kind of late in the game. Um, is that something you warn players about before the game that this guy's going to try and do this and he's going to try and get away with things? Yes, of course. You know, in the in the in our presentation, we do the players. We 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 always do our due diligence on all the opposition and say their strengths and and obviously potentially weaknesses and all that. Um, and that's Stephen. He's been very successful in the league. I, I mean, uh, a lot of teams in the league would like him because he's he's one of those guys that yeah you know you don't like playing against, but you kind of wish he, he was on your side in a way because he's so he's just like that, you know, and he's. Um, um, he's carved out a really nice career for himself um, by playing in a, in, a, in a certain way. But I thought, you know, with him and Gordon up top, they, you know, and the, the balls at the beginning, they're pretty, you know, they're two towering men. So you have to deal with them really well. And, um, and I don't think you'll get probably a more difficult game in terms of um, having to deal with that kind of stuff. And, and Stephen and Daniil and Nick and Mark, I thought, were... We're extremely, extremely good to, to get a clean sheet as well. That's, um, that's another one that's, that's something that we aim to get is clean sheets. What was, what was the discussion with uh, Goodson at the end there? Um, I ended up going to, um, um, I think it was Copenhagen when he was playing there, and we had this massive platter of seafood that they got there. It was one of the best platters of seafood that I've ever had. And I see Clarence, you have you ever come across a better platter than that? And he's like, no, no. So, so, yeah. <laughs> What do uh, you feel about the campaign, knowing now that more than likely you'll be in the playoffs? Oh, we don't, don't, we don't even think about that. We don't, we don't think about playoffs. We don't think about what. We just all we think about is the next game, the next day at training, how we can get better, how we can evolve as a team. You know, as I said, I, I sit here and we're, we're in a lovely position of 19 points from 11 games. Um, we understand we're in a nice position, but we're not getting no no way are we getting too far ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, we we have to improve in, in a lot of aspects. So all we're worrying now is we've got a little break. Can we get better in this break? We hope so, and we'll be working them hard. And um, we'll give them a little break, then we'll work them hard, and then all we're thinking about is New York away. It's as simple as that. Uh, he was a nice wee cameo from Danny. He did really well in the 25 seconds he was on. And I think he got a, a, a unfortunately the guy got a knock and um, I, he blacked out a bit and um, league rules says you have to come straight off. So un, And that's so uh, unfortunate for the man. Because um, we just, to be fair, we needed some energy. We needed some youthful energy and he loves to get on the ball and drive at people and um, we actually needed him to tell you the truth. And... Um, and um, yes, it was unfortunate for his injury. Six wins now um, in the first 11 games. Six wins was the total from 2013. Was that a milestone you wanted to reach right before the World Cup break? Um, I'll tell you what, it was a milestone that um, if we didn't reach that pretty soon, I'd be pretty disappointed. But um, to, be, to be fair, I think how I'd, how, I, how I'd say this is, is I don't think we're as a team um, playing, playing as well as we can, but we're gain, gaining points, more points than probably I thought we'd get after 11 games, which just sounds like a you know, big contradiction, isn't it? But, but we're not playing well, but, but we're showing a lot of character and a lot of spirit, which I love, and, and, and our shape's good. We're not conceding very many chances. We don't concede very much chances, which means we're always in games, no matter how 
um, the possession stats or whatever go against us or this and that goes against us. We, we always feel like there's only one game we haven't felt like we should have got something out of the game. Now we have to, again, we have to say that we have to get better and we're, we're trying to get better um, in a lot of aspects of the ball and evolve as a team. But I think now, you know, what I, what I wanted this Toronto FC team to be is at least when teams play against us, they have to earn, earn it to win it. They have to play really well to beat us. And um, and I think that's starting to happen to Toronto. I think that's, that, that reputation's coming around the league and that's a, that's a good reputation to have because... Um, you know, nobody likes uh, nobody likes to come going. God, I know we're gonna we're gonna try and break these guys down, and I know they're gonna get chances, and and it's starting to get nice. But we'll we'll keep working at things. It's a little different, a little different buzz in the stadium towards as compared to last year. Do you feel like not only is it more cold, but it's more lively? There's more of a feeling of belief, if you will. Well, I think you'd probably be have to be pretty uh, deaf, blind, and dumb to, to not really realize there's a. <laughs> Same to tell you, I mean, times by you to tell you. <laughs> um, yeah, look, we're winning games now, and we won that game 1 0, and we're a wee bit disappointed to tell the truth how we played. In a way, we got, I mean, the guys were, you know, we're, you know, we were a bit tired, but we thought we could have probably won that game, you know, even though we knew it was going to be a tough game, and we take the, we, nobody's celebrating like we won like a, you know, it's just another win. We tick that box and move on. And that's why I hoped we'd get to, you know, is, is you know, we just start to get to wins and the crowd, the crowd will be going, oh, we won, but we didn't play very well. <laughs> Praying for that time to happen because um, I think most times in the past we've just been praying for wins. So, um, as I said, I think the, the crowd now um, expects us to be, you know, tough at home, which we have been, and, um, and expects us to... Um, I just say to win. What are the, the team's plans during the World Cup break, and how do you keep momentum going and spirits up after a three-week lapse in an unusual season? Well, I'll give them a bit of time off to tell the truth. They're probably sick of my voice, so sick of looking at me for a bit. So we'll get, we'll get them away for um, you know a few days, so they can kind of you know just rest their bodies, rest their minds, and then um, and then we're gonna you know because we've, we've got you know. Luke and Colin and Dom and we actually haven't worked with them in training we haven't been able to because of all the games and so we'll get guys who have kind of had Jackson has still coming back he's still not sharp and John's still not sharp we can, it's a real good time we can get them injury free and fit and hardened and fit and we know our shape and we can get them to know each other a bit better so it's a really you talk about it's you know keep the momentum keep the momentum yeah but it's a really nice time for us to to get together because we've been really disjointed ever since day one of pre-season we haven't had a, a continuity a flow about you know there's always been something guys coming in you know injuries those trades Colin and Dom we, we've been trying to get them from day one but you know when, when the dominoes fell now we can finally work with these guys and we've got a squad now we're getting a squad now that that is MLS compatible where, where we can be pretty strong in MLS has uh, Adoro decided to change his hair color yet? Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Good luck with that one. <laughs> Thanks,